he's in a period when there's Simmons and there's Vinopola and there's Don Brandt and he's a different type of player. He's not going to get near that international side. So he's not going to get that extra 20 grand they get a game or whatever. Go cash in in France. Why not? Hello, in the week that Br- Bristol blitz Bath, the Exiles down the Falcons. What the hell happened to Quinns this week? And I've lost the firm favourites for relegation. And the Blue Bulls win the Curry Cup. Plus the Six Nations are less than a week away, but are England ready? That's all to come on this week's episode of the Rock and Roll podcast. But lads, let's start with this. Um, Lions in Australia, stroke of genius or madness? Well, do you know who proposed it? Who was had it, the idea? Was it Dave Rennie? It was, so it's it's come from Australia. No, not so. so it's not the Lions or the, the South Africans who are proposing it. Um, yeah, it's. I think it's very simply rugby Australia looking for some a way of keeping themselves afloat for another year, and I don't think we should we should go for it. If we're that desperate, have the Lions play Australia this year, and then play South Africa in four years' time. Just change that a bit, but I don't th- don't play South Africa in Australia. That's a waste, surely. And the South Africans would hate it. Yeah. Someone's just said that for a, a bit of clickbait, isn't they, really? Well, no, I think it's a serious <laughs> suggestion because it would it would really help rugby Australia. Um, basically having the pie and the Lions pay for their pay their staff's wages for six months. Um, good for rugby in Australia more generally, get a lot of interest. A lot of government involvement. All of that would be be fantastic for Australian rugby, but wait your turn, lads. Yeah, yeah wait. You've got well. You've only got another four years. They've only got another four years. Yeah, exactly. Just be patient. They did suggest. I think the, yeah, go on. I think the one thing that's not going to happen is it's going to be arranged rearranged for next year. So I just think with such a packed rugby calendar and like teams having their own tours and the disruption it causes to those tours that are supposed to be money makers and stuff. I just can't see them rearranging it to next year. I think it will either happen somewhere in Europe or happen in Australia. South Africa seems very unlikely in their current state. Yeah. Oh, personally, I've got nothing. I mean, I know the sort of the Lions purists would be like, Lions tour is the point that you go to the country, they pump the money in. And I understand that, totally understand that. But at the end of the day, rugby's still a product. You can grow there, you can grow the game over here by having the Lions play around the stadiums, whether we get crowds or not is another thing. So most of the South African team play over here anyway, so they're already here in the first instance. So you haven't got two, and or they just pop over from France. They're all basically here anyway, apart from Vermeulen and Khaleesi and Bosch. They're probably already here. So you could just crack on with it. I say over here, we get the Lions tour. You still get the advertising from the TV. You still get the big, so you can still do a documentary. It's just... It's a strange time we live in. Like, as I say, I don't think you can delay it. There's no point to put it in Australia because it's flipping. That would be seven o'clock in the morning. No one from South Africa is going to, they won't, they, well, it's just like, I know they've, they talk about New Zealand and there's a bigger expat community of South Africans over there. So that benefits like a couple of thousand people. I like three yeah. options to me sack it off, do it in South Africa if it's safe, or do it in Europe, or do it in the UK and then travel, do it at Twickenham. And then ban to play France in midweek. Have have a, a match against France, beforehand. which would be incredible. Yeah, I don't, do you know? Do you know who they're touring or meant to be touring this summer? Don't know. But even this if summer. you put out, even if you put out a France on the twenty threes against them, like you saw New Zealand, like the Highlanders beat them last time when they went over there. So like, you know, whatever the French team puts out at the moment would be pretty good. France are touring Australia. Oh, there you go. Um, their first fixture is 3rd of July in Singapore. Mm. No, Singapore. No, hold on. Cool. No, that's that's World 15 against Barbarians. That'll be interesting. Mm. Anyway, no. Um, I I agree. I think what's going to happen is at the absolute last minute it's going to be 
moved to happen in the UK. Yeah. There's you won't they won't do it early because of the implications it has for South Africa. But the closer and closer we get, the more there's no choice. But mm. looking at this, actually there's some interesting fixtures. England are playing Scotland in San Francisco. Hmm. No, in uh, New York, the new um, Rounds and Chargers Stadium. Not that New York. Be, that's time, like that's LA. SoFi Stadium. It's so I mean, is and that is we have, no, the, it's interesting they've not had an international like I'm surprised after the success of the Ireland and Chicago against the All Blacks that they haven't sent more internationals over there. Well, that looks like what they're going to do. I think it would be really good to have a, you know, how they, have, how they used to have the church. This is completely distracting, but it's semi-lines related to the <laughs> Churchill yeah. Cup um, tournament they had for a couple of years. Oh, definitely. Sort of Saxons, mm. Wolfhounds, etc. Have that in the Lions tour year in the US. Oh. be fantastic. Yeah, that and would you be have the French Barbarians, Maori All Blacks, like oh, international cool. teams, second teams. Obviously, doesn't give the players any rest, doesn't make any money, all of that. But great but, entertainment value. <laughs> I'd still watch it though. Yeah, yeah, we would. That's four. That's about <laughs> it. And speaking of something that we uh, we watched and we really enjoyed, well, for three of us probably enjoyed, uh, was uh, Brit uh, Bristol Blitz in Bath, forty-eight three. Um, where do we want to start with that? Should we start with Bristol? I was just going to make a point about Bristol that my my notes are Bristol, just pure class. Everything clicked in the first half. Could have been more clinical in the second half. Uh, semi, semi, semi is my note. <laughs> yes. It just, just... Them, didn't it? it just, they, they've been, they, when you watch Bristol struggle a little bit, when they're in third gear, the, the, they drop the ball. They don't quite get the offload away. It's a little bit clunky. They kick when they shouldn't kick. They run when they shouldn't run. But in this game, everything worked. John Arfoa, perfect example of someone that just l- took the book game by the book, uh, by the horns. Massive offloads, massive carries. Semi was just semi. I mean, the fact that Bath were kicking to him, I mean, that is just suicide. Like Five kickoffs in the first half, we kicked it to him. him. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I disagree. In as, a, as, a, as an idea, fantastic idea. Balls in the air. You have got plenty of time to get runners to him. Knock him if out of the game. The first at the same time as the tackler gets there, he can't step them. Problem is, he did. Was <laughs> kick change was absolutely terrible. Um, the execution on the kickoff was not enough hang time, and then the chasers weren't weren't right. They should, yeah. You've got to change the tactic if it's not working. That's that's a problem. Before we um, set Johnny up for a bath blitz, um, what um, what's your opinions? Of some week because I, I thought I, I re- realised we'll probably just talk about Bristol in the same aspect. We know Bristol's going to be good. They're going to be in the top two, definitely in the top four, probably going to make the final on this basis. Piers O'Connor, let's talk about Piers O'Connor. BT's picked him up a little bit. Where about to see in the England reckon injury reckon now? Because I really rate him. Difficult to say, isn't it? Because they were talking him up mid-game, and he sort of come out left field. Really, I sort of saw him as, as like a backup when Ran- when P- uh, Silani Piertal wasn't playing and Randranda wasn't playing. But they kind of he's kind of now. How like, old is he? 20, Not old. Twenty four. At all. Twenty four. See, I think once, yeah, you get into a post Farrell era, he'll be around. I I say give him two three years, two years, yeah, and then he'll be. He's our age. He's I'm actually older than him. He's okay. Twenty eighth of August, ninety five. So he's twenty five. Twenty five, twenty six. Again, this year. makes me feel terrible. What's happened to my life? <laughs> yes, well, should have eaten more. <laughs> other than the gym, um, and just been a better, better rugby player. So I think he's he's a sort of twenty third man. In international rugby, because he can play any of the centre and back three positions. Mm. Um, so his competition is 
we have England don't really play with a player like that. He would be, he'd do very well with Wales or Scotland off the top of my head. They have a lot of sort of average to good club level players, which is, he's on the good end of that group, but he's not, he's not elite. Um, hope he gets a cap. If he's eligible for somebody else, he should go for it, but he's a really good player. That's for oh, sure. definitely. Gets a lot of fancy points. He did very well for me last season in the Premier League. But yeah. I, uh, having said that, I never really feel like he does that much. Like I know that he does. I know he's a good player. But he's never the per- per- person that people are shouting about after the game's finished. So, yeah, hopefully he's in one of those spots where he does get a cap at some point. But definitely if he was eligible in front of the country, he'd get in ahead of the likes of, I would have thought, the likes of James Lang and and those that are picked for the Scotland squad at the moment. But we don't really have players like that in an England squad. I think, I think they were saying before the game that he was quali- he's qualified for England, Ireland, Australia and New Zealand. Mm. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, for Ireland then. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, they could do with him. He would... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Born in Sydney. Yeah, he's, I think his father... I think he's got an yeah. Irish, Irish grandparent... He grew up in England after a period and then must have some Kiwi in there somewhere. He's had a lovely journey, actually. He was at Wasps and then I think he was cast off at Wasps and then went into the lower leagues and Bristol picked him up from the championship. I can't remember who he's playing. He might have been playing for Bedford. He uh, loans to Bedford and then moved permanently to Ealing for a season. He scored eight tries in 19 games. Not bad. Um, and then got picked up. So yeah, no, he's done. I've done very well for himself, I think. And that's that little spell will be why he's a bit older and only just coming to the fore now. But it's perfectly fine. Um, but that's what I think. I think Bristol have got a lot of very good players who aren't being picked internationally as well, which yeah. I think does them well. Also, I know they. He, he wouldn't look this good at playing for Bath. Like no. Bath are players who, if they were playing for Bristol, would be picked for England. Oh yeah, I mean, no one would be questioning JJ at the moment if he was playing yeah. an open running side for Bristol. Sadly, not to pile on the criticism. <sighs> Come on, man! That's, that's one of the things about rugby is that coaching is ridiculously important to how the team ends up being on the pitch because there are so few players that you can just give them the ball and they'll win you the game, like basketball or football or not so much the NFL, but some of those smaller, basically smaller-sided sports, individual player talent can win you the game, but rugby is just not possible. No, no. You, yeah, you need you need the whole package there, which Bath don't have. And again, coaching, earlier last week, um, Gervin Dempsey left. Mm. He was... The backs coach at Leinster, um, which said a lot in the week before we got stuffed that we played the best attacking side in the Premiership without an attack or a defence or a kicking game. That was the thing is we played seventy in the first half. I think we played seventy seven percent in our own half. Didn't kick away enough. Um, it was just a dis- kind of I don't know terrible all round. Apart from that few. Bright Sparks and kind of Miles Reed and Mercer and Bayliss putting shifts in because they were the back row having to tackle everyone all the time. Um, and yeah, just all our top players didn't really perform. Um, Priestland got another yellow card. I think that's second one of the season. Um, and yeah, Bartha, Bartha looking terrible. Everyone's calling for Hooper to go, but I think it's so harsh to like say that like the current situation won't have an effect. I mean, and also as Harry, you kind of pointed to that this week. How many top flight coaches are there around to just kind of pick up or chuck money at? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're still signing people. We signed Kutsia this afternoon. Apparently, it was all confirmed. The Mercer's gone. 
so that's a nice little pickup kind of a bit of a replacement for low i guess he's not really a replacement for mercer he's a different style of player um but I'm like, for like in terms of it's like for like in terms of where he'll be in the squad or just oh you got yeah. the same salary and the same oh definitely play every but week. if there's going to be no relegation just have it as a transition yeah season soon as what's his name tian schumann can play just chuck him on Tal Priest and he can sit on the bench for the rest of the season if he's off to Cardiff. But yeah, terrible. Oh, I sort of rethought rethought my thing on Stuart Hooper, and I feel a bit sorry for him to be honest. Like I don't necessarily think he is the best coach potentially because again he's kind of just he was an amazing like leader on on for Bath, and obviously he's got that connection with Bruce Craig, so that's why you keep him on. But I actually I really do think it's it's Bath's team. So you look at it, right, I'll just go through this Bath team, right? Showman's been capped by South Africa. Dunn's been capped by England. Christian Judge has played for Saracens. Josh McNally's been around the game a long time. Stokes, Stokes been capped by England. Bayliss is, is there. Reed and Mercer. You've got Tom de Glanville. You've got Mock Conaghy went to the World Cup. Joseph went to the World Cup. Matt avacy has been to the World Cup. Hamer Webb looked like, it, again, he's rapid. Priestland's been to the World Cup. Multiple caps. Play for, Spencer's been capped for England. Like that shy should never lose, despite the second rows. They should never be losing by under 50 points. They've shipped, near, you've nearly shipped 100 points in two games. Oh, it's, we've, I think we've averaged conceding something like five, try, five how, many, how many, was it 17 tries in three games or something, or four games? It was something ridiculous. Four games, I think. I mean, I think, I think like who you can blame like individual coaching on Hooper and stuff, but it's, I think it's just a team and a team ethos and players wanting to play for each other. And uh, I don't know what needs to happen. Something probably needs to change, but I don't think it will change overnight. And you just got to give these things time. I am. Um, I was watching it going. I mean, just very quick on Joseph. Jonathan Joseph summed up for me perfectly when he was just like smart, not smiling is the wrong word, but he just couldn't believe what was happening when I think it was the Red Randrandra trial or something. And he just turned around and was like, what the hell just happened there? Just like, just they're just a bit lost. It was, yeah, they just, just take the ball by the horns. Like two best players, Miles Reed and Mercer. Also, forgot to mention, you got Falatau on the bench. You got Red Path on the bench. And you've got Cock and Sang on the bench. And Batty and Thomas. They've all been capped. Like, where's the leadership? Where's like someone going, guys, come on. Come on. Yep. Like bit defense, bit more effort. Do you know what as well? For the first time, I've looked at a lot, I've I've been very critical of Irish losing players. I watched Joe Cock and Asega this weekend, and I'm very pleased to know how anymore. Because Cock and Asega leaving has allowed Ben Loder to shine. And I'll talk about Ben Loder in a moment. But I'm so pleased they got we've got rid of him because he's getting on. I don't know what's half. Of, he's probably on a quarter of a million at Bath. I know he's been. And he had, but he yeah. was outpaced by Dave Atwood. Atwood. Dave Atwood. I, I said so. I said that on the WhatsApp group. I was half joking because the curl of the kick on the ball was moving towards Atwood's side, and obviously Atwood is just holding fucking a singer back. Nonetheless. Says well, he's quite a big guy. And he, in theory, is quite fast. So, maybe also, what don't kick it, but if you're going to kick, kick it better than that. <laughs> More don't kick! Of... You're the size of a bus! Don't kick! Julian Sarver near kicked! Joe Lo- John Lou never kicked! You don't see Naravoro kick! He runs through people! Well, well, yeah, he does kick okay, <laughs> terrible. You don't see Naholo with <laughs> that much option unless he kicks for court, kicks to the post. Don't kick, Joe. Run. And actually, to be fair, the one time he did run, he got ended by someone. Who ended him? I think it was like a back ended him, didn't they? Who split him in half? I can't remember. I don't remember who it was, but someone just put him, put him in, back in his place. Basically, the only thing, the only thing worse than Bath's performance though was Lawrence Delalio's headwear. That's that's the only thing that was worse. Saved us. <sighs> in in all honesty, in, in to summarise my point anyway, Bath get a grip. 
be better. Yeah, we'll see you next game. Um, reset go again. Um, to cheer, cheer you up though, Johnny, Leicester lost, which is always nice to see. Yes, very nice to and see. And well done for Pat um, Alex Anderson getting his first win, 25-50. Only saw the highlights. Highlight of the game was Marlon Yard's try. It's very nicely finished. Nice crossfield kick. Leicester though, troubles. What poor old Jordan Tuafu is leaving, or is he leaving? Apparently Leon have signed him, but apparently he's not left. Yeah, not clear. Is that that is it? A bit weird. I didn't realise that Kovac Visa's brother was playing for. I didn't. I didn't make the connection. Because they, they oh, were are they brothers. Yeah, yeah, they're brothers. Jasper is at Sale and Kovac is at Leicester. I didn't didn't make the connection at all. I don't know why. Um, and also Thomas Lavanini is leaving Leicester as well. Yeah, interesting. So, that, I mean, Paul, two year contract up, and not uh, not done enough to earn another one. No, simply. But uh, Montoya played, didn't he? Yeah, he came, was he come off the bench. For... That's a really that's an under the radar slipping. Um, yeah. Speaking of Argentinians, poor old Carreras. I talked up my parent to my parents. If you're going to watch one player, watch my Mac- poor old Carreras. That was horrible, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very. Oh, yeah, not not nice. That actually happened because they both have really good technique. Mm. And they yeah. were both very brave, and they were both doing exactly the right thing. But they got there at exactly the same time, unfortunately. So I'm obviously referring to the Northampton's 31-26 win over Gloucester. Not a complete performance in Northampton. They had it. They turned it on when they needed to turn it on, but there's still there's still a little bit of underbelly. If you put it up and they're not going to like it, but I thought Ezekwe was really very good. They could really do with signing him permanently. Really could do with him. Whether he will or not, don't know. But also, Sean Arendorf is one of the pickups of the last season and a half from Prody Durr. What a player he is. His finish was absolutely fantastic. He just gives him so much more carry off the base of the scrum. Nair Vora was better, I'd say, but Roy, but Roy Hutchinson not getting picked in the Scotland squads. He's suddenly come out. The chap's gone, pick me, pick me. Well, yeah, it was Hutchinson was dropped from the Scotland squad perfectly legitimately on form. And then the next day, has one of the best games that I've seen him play. Um, which is quite, quite yep. frustrating. Um, just on Aidendorf, the on the number eight, mm. he he's had games like this before for Northampton and then isn't able or hasn't been able to do it every week. So I wonder if it's a sort of stars align, has to be completely fit type situation where he's where he can do that. Because that like as you say, the step for that try and the explosiveness. Not everybody can do that fully fit and it's very hard to do if you're carrying an injury. So maybe if he's he's back and there's no niggling injuries, then we can see a bit more of it. But yeah, it's a good player. Um, Gloucester? Yeah, I don't really want to have to talk about it, but I know I'm going to have to. Uh, just, yeah, same sort of thing. A few players back that we needed back, like Hines had some good touches. Um, Thorley had a couple of good touches, but a lot of the time um, we're getting into some good positions. We've broken and we're not near the try line and we knock it on. Or we, It's the same thing, always has been. We always... Make a rod for our own back. We we create a great break, some on or give away a penalty or shit, silly little things like that, and then we let a game slip away from us. So there's a period where we were just sensibly kind of notching up penalties, looking like we were going to try and control the game, and then all it takes is a bit of chaos and a mistake here and there, and suddenly we've conceded two or three. So it's just another one of those. Where I feel like we probably, if we were going to win a game, this is one of the games we probably would have won, given that the Northampton didn't particularly play very well. Yet we still can't seem to win that either. And it's just a 
a pattern of that losing mentality, I think. So a little bit worrying because we are now slipping into very much relegation candidates. So um, hopefully they something changes, but I don't really know what's going to change. I mean, I mean, the ring fence is going to save you, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah, might have to. It was another desperately close game that a couple of things go better or mm. worse for Northampton and Gloucester would have won. It's not like you'd be you'd be happy enough if you were paying your season ticket to go and watch this Gloucester team. They're interesting, if not necessarily good. Um, lucky to not be in the same path of fixtures as Bath have. I think both of these team actually teams actually would have. But the fixtures that Bath have had recently, Exeter and Bristol would have done quite similar damage, I fear. So, yeah. They... Done where you can. I think what's going to happen this season is you have got to take your chances. Like, and if you don't take your chances, you're going to lose games and you're going to... That, because we'll talk about Quinns in a moment. Like, they took a chance out of nowhere, really. Look at Irish, and I'll talk about Irish in a moment. Worcester which we might want to, talk, to come on to, like they probably should look back at that and they really should have been an extra for like, tw- I watched the last 20 minutes of that and it from on my phone. So for a flicking between that and the gloss, they're going, man, their chances of like, and an extra didn't look comfortable. It was getting rocked. And then Stuart Holt sort of took control and then sort of kicked the ball, just basically played territory for the last little bit of it. But as I say, I think this season, you've got to take your chances. You've got to, whatever opportunity you get, take it, because otherwise you're going to lose games because everyone's going to beat each other, I think. And unlike Bristol and Exeter and probably Sale, you'd say that everyone else beats each other nine times out of ten. Maybe Wasp as well is up there, but then you don't know with Wasp because they just lost to Quinns. Who Bath has to play next? Can't wait. Um, but before we get on to Quinn's Walsh very quickly, because I, I know you, none of you have seen it, but I'm very happy because Irish won. And um, for the first time, all of our international players, and as they keep going, Irish have got these Galacticos. Oh my Christ, they make a difference. When they play well, holy moly. I mean, Austin Crevy was absolutely brilliant. Still reckon he could probably do it for Argentina. He was unreal. Sean O'Brien, I mean, I know we talk about him like he's definitely not been worth the £400,000. But when he has played, yesterday he just tackled his face off. Didn't make a tackle. Every tackle he was... He just smacked... Gary Graham just got smashed. I don't know how he got me 23 points yesterday in fantasy. Just kept getting smashed everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, But the world-class Galactico second row, you can... Name me a more experienced second row combination than Coleman and Simmons. Is like that's like what dreams are made of. I mean, Coleman was superb off the bench. That Newcastle line out had ninety two percent at the start of the weekend, and Irish just ripped it apart. It was a, it was for the first time Irish actually had a clinical display that they kicked the took their chances, put the ball in the right area, scored some tries. Sort of lovely try. The roller try is fantastic. Crossfield kick. James Stokes I wanted to talk about. Sounds like we talked about him a little bit last year. But sort of, he's been playing played in that one. Bear in mind, he's come from that one to play for commentary in the championship. If you if he was a FIFA player, he'd be like your sixty five rated right mid that just occasionally would get you a goal, but would make so many mistakes. But you want to get him in your team for basically perfect example of his try. He overruns the pass from Parton, so he has to take it behind him. And then scores an aerobatic dive in the corner. Crazy. But for me, Dean Richards said in the, in the week in rugby pass, the Irish are a top two team. I think we're looking at the table. If we can get all our players on the pitch and keep them fit, we can beat that Newcastle. They'd only lost once. They'd lost to Bristol, which they probably should have won in hindsight. But they didn't set the opportunities. I'm not saying we're going to win but I'm not thinking Irish relegation this year for the first time in about five years. <laughs> then we're going up. I think we're getting top six. That's if you can keep your OAPs going. Um, 
I mean, your problem is going to be after this season is what happens when your short-term wonder, wonder players leave. What is there going to be left? I'm trying to think There's going to be a few very good players who have come through the academy, but then below that, you're going to be back to square one. But we'll just sign like Alan Aratoa or like who else is old and Australian like, who needs a payday? Who else is out there? James, I'll probably get James O'Connor back. Reese Hodge, he's getting on a bit. Probably get him. You need forwards though. Um, yeah, he's an old Australian for Michael Hooper. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I will say right. so Irish as well. We've, we've signed a we've signed a coach, Cornell uh, Van Zyl. I think it's Cornell Van Zyl. Who's he's the been at the cheaters, team? hasn't he? Cheaters, yeah. So hopefully we'll get some Saffers. We could do with some Saffers. Um, he's found a job yeah, all that's... those players and coaches horrible situation so I'm glad that they're all slowly finding somewhere including that for example that lock who Ealing have signed who they're very excited about uh, yeah I suspect Bobby, we will see Bobby, Bobby something or other Bobby De Bobby or something like that I can't remember his surname but yes got a cool name anyway but I've forgotten it was um, but game of the weekend no what the hell has happened at Quinn's Oh, it was, it was such a good game. You'd be annoyed if you were Gustard seeing that. Very, <laughs> very. That is a little middle finger up to Gustard, isn't it? But you, you do want you do wonder with a performance like that because that wasn't just the team playing well; that was a team going out to prove something at the weekend. One to fifteen, and you do wonder what the situation was like. I mean, you can speculate and go, oh, it might have been toxic or whatever, but you do wonder what it was like when Gus Gold was there and what suddenly needed to change. But it was a very, very good display. Care, vintage care. Um, they tried to play him out. They were trying sneaky little pushes and stuff. And they got picked up for a few penalties um, for trying to disrupt him, but there was no stopping him. And soon as him and Smith are kind of doing their great running game and you've got a forward pack that are on the front foot. You, I mean, I think we've said it before, to beat Wasps at home, you've got to play, you've got to beat Wasps at their own game, you just got to score more points than them. I mean, that's winning any game, but you can't try and play a defensive game against Wasps because they will just run you off the park. And they were great. And Smith was Smith's decision making was great when he needed to kick, and it, nothing was really happening. He'd have some really clever kick down into the corner or something, or grubber it through. Um, and it was complete performance by him, especially opposite Umanga, who looked startled at points. Not as good. Basically. Not as good. Yep. Umanga really benefits and plays significantly better. <sighs> When he's got Robson and Gopper Thrilly, but Robson, mm. he can he's he's okay with um, the Borgia at centre or even De Jong. But R- Robson is the is the player that really gets Umanga and sort of creates the play for him to do the good stuff with. Very grammatically accurate there. Um, but yeah, Umanga plays so much better when Robson's on the pitch. So. It was not a huge surprise that he struggled a bit this weekend, but Smith does not have that problem. Um, obviously, benefits from care, but he's a bit more self reliant, let's say, as a in terms of. And they form. had um, what's his name at centre? Hugh Hazen, the South African. Mr. Hazen, yeah. Hugh yeah. Hazen, who just offered some direct. You have all that creativity, and you know he's going route one, which I think balanced quite well. Um, he, he is so good, and he, and it's not just Route really One because he can. Oh yeah, he can pass and he can offload, and and make, defensively he's great. Yeah, he it makes such a big difference. Good player. Um, I saw the last sort of twenty minutes of this because I'd watched the Irish game and there was I don't know, twenty minutes, half an hour left. Um, Louis Lyon looked quite good from what I saw. Got got a try. Very good all game, running running good lines. I mean, as much as Harlequins are great, there's a few players in the Wasp team who just weren't performing. And I, they were picking it up a lot in commentary. But Sopawanga, 
great skills, great all round play, but he just looked out of sorts in defence at fullback. Um, and he wasn't really committing to going in for catches or going in for tackles. He got, I mean, he got bounced by Liner, um, who's not the biggest of people. Um, and I think they, they took him off, I think, after 50, 60 minutes yeah, for yeah. Miller, but. Yeah. He 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 doesn't look. He looks out of sorts at the moment. I've I've never thought he's felt comfortable, Sopwanger, since he's been in England. No, it's been times when his attack's been okay, but defensively, he always feels like that when I watch him. Anyway, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah. That makeup's on in it. Like I've spoken, we've spoken before about Sopwanger's defensive frailties, and it's because he's not the favoured fly half there. Whether really should he just be fighting Numunga for the starting ten shirt? And th- because again, you're looking at this bat line, right? You had Kivari on one wing, you had Minotzi on the other wing. Minotzi's a fullback, so you've got a fullback right there ready to go, and you've got a ten at fullback. He's not a fullback at all. What? Who else have they? Uh, Was got ten wise? No, they've got Atkinson, haven't they? Yeah. The. It's difficult because it's very helpful to have in attack. It's very helpful to have Sopoanger at fifteen if Gopeth isn't there. If Gopeth's not playing, they have those. They have the two playmakers, and that opens up, really opens it up for them. But if all three of them are playing, you then have three players who are not great defensively, whereas usually it's only two. Obviously, Gopeth is pretty good but he's also quite old now so doesn't make quite the same level of dominant tackles as isn't quite as fast etc but either are some of the wingers injured or with England because it doesn't um, really... what's his name Bassett wasn't playing obviously because he could you could just move Benazzi to full back and put Bassett yeah. on the wing yes Obviously, uh, so a dog is within England, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yep. Bassett. Robson, you didn't have Jack Willis. Uh, no launch because it launch is injured. Um, I, mean, I mean, it tell you what helped was um, Marla. Obviously, not being of England camp was fantastic. Just carrying and it's in the scrum. And actually, Brooks came on. I and mean, even we're struggling against the Quinn's front row. Yeah, no, he's he's seriously good and isn't isn't struggling. He's I think I have a feeling he'll be a, a sort of John Ofoa going till he's forced out by the player because he well, he's never been explosive, really. No. Nope. Technically good and smart. I think he'll be, be around for a while. He looks really fit, though. Like, he looks in great nick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not... He looks, like, he looks not in like fantastic shape. Super quick or, in, or for a prop or, like, outrageously strong. He's just technically really good. Um, I've just remembered, because we didn't really talk about the COVID thing. Can I... Ra- I'm going to raise a point, right? So they're not selling... I don't, I, and I don't really understand this. Unless I don't get it at all, really. They're not celebrating, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I want, perfect example: Bristol didn't celebrate, but John Ofoa walks off the pitch. He high fives everyone. He's slapping everyone on the back. They're fist bumping each other. Like well, I don't understand. They tackle. They tackle each other where they're going head on head. They get there's five people piled on top of them, but they can't high five someone. What's that about? It's all just for show, isn't it? The government, somebody in the government said, oh yeah, it is a bit weird. Maybe they shouldn't be doing it. And then they've all had to scramble to not, football as well, have had to scramble to not have the big celebrations because at any moment, the government could be like, could just make the decision that they don't want sport to keep running and turn it all off again. So they've just got to play these games to keep the government happy. Unfortunately, so it was just—I just think it was the funniest yeah. thing. It is hilarious, though. They're like, "No, don't get any closer." 
it was celebration. The best one was for me that did make me chuckle was when James Stokes goes in. So Tom Parton runs up to him, basically gives him a hug because he scored an absolute flying thing. Paddy Jackson then tries and gets involved, and then they both realise we shouldn't be doing it. Paddy Jackson just goes, "Oh, for God's sake, why can't I celebrate?" Like it's like perfectly summed up. But that was one. I did. I did think Northampton looked like they practiced proper air high fives. <laughs> yeah. Very really good at it. Um. Yeah. So we'll move on from the Premiership just quickly around. The, we, there were some other games on uh, the Blue Balls won won uh, the Curry Cup, beating the Sharks twenty six nineteen. Went to well, went to massively overtime. I think um, got a last grass try. Um, so well done for the Blue Balls. Um, did anyone see the Bordeaux result though? I saw the last second of the game, or the what? last five seconds of the game. Nathaniel Halu. Or Halu, I think that's how you pronounce it. What a finish, lad. With your head yeah. being taken off by a... Close line by Racker. Yeah. What a finish from it. He's only 20. What a finish that was. Very good. Again. To win the game. Come on. Making a late, make, late surge. I don't know where. Let's have a quick chat where we are. We keep beating teams above us, so that's only positive. Oh, we're up to fourth. Oh, come on. And considering we were, after six games, 12th, I'll take that. Yeah, and don't lose too many to France, the French squad. All being considered. So that was uh, very, po very positive. Uh, on front, um, on us as well, we've also, Louis Pickermolt looks like he's signing for us. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now he's not going to Bath supposedly which was never going to happen well yeah because obviously he's got love in Montpellier getting yeah. relegated so he's off because we were linked with CJ Sander about on Monday and then they quickly say we're not getting in we're going in for Lickie, Louis Pickamore so there was some player I think we're losing some French lad but I can't remember who it was let me just try and find him we're losing a young A anyway to another team. I think he's going to Leon, I think. Um, was he playing? I think it was all round a anyway. weekend of good rugby, which was glad to be back on, I have to say. Yeah, I agree. And we've got more rugby coming this weekend. Italy, France, kicking off the Six Nations. 50 for France. Probably close. 40-20. Give or take five. Yeah. I think. Well, I say that. This this Italy team is significantly better. They're a lot more... They've spent a lot more time together than most Italy teams have, having had the Autumn Nations Cup quite recently. They... are obviously missing... Um, You've lost a lad. Ledry. Ledry. And oh. Minotzi. Minotzi. Well, and Minotzi, that's true. Mm. Maybe not then. Also, uh, they're not they're not they're not as bad as they used to be, but just France at the moment. For me, yeah. their favourites to win the whole thing, to be honest. France are quite special. Yeah. yeah. And the thing with the French is that they're they are going to score. They're capable of scoring lots of tries, capable of conceding them as well. But certainly against Italy, I don't think they'll hold anything back, will they? So it could be quite a big scoreline. Um, does the dog who start for England, or does he get on the twenty-three, or does they just leave him on the in the stands? I don't know, actually, good question. Against I mean, a lot will depend on how they he's got on in training, uh, won't it? Um, I don't think he'll. I don't think Jones will take many chances. I think he'll want to put out a, a good, solid twenty-three every single game. So I think it depends whether a dog would does enough in training to get into that twenty-three berth. Really. Yeah, I agree. the The interesting choices at thirteen, I think, um, is uh, really struggling with the names today. Ollie Lawrence. Lor yeah, is it Slade or Lawrence? At thirteen, um, and the other one on the bench. Um, otherwise, I think the team more, more or less picks itself. 
even like once 23 picks itself. I think it'd be nice to see Lawrence start against Scotland. I think that would be one of the teams I would start him against. Wouldn't start him against. I'd start him against Scotland or Italy personally. Probably, yeah. If you're going to, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think next next weekend should be an interesting one. I hope Cam Redpath gets on. Um, that would be good. But I think the Scotland team's not shaping up too badly compared to previous seasons. And actually, to be fair, la- was it last? Was it last year? The last time they came to visit was 48 all. Um, uh, so it could be an interesting one. And apparently Finn Russell's not causing a ruckus in the Scotland <laughs> camp anymore. So <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> you see him juggling tennis rackets. Mm-hmm. Very skillful. Too um, much time. I really hope I'm going to eat the sentence that comes out of my mouth, but I think Scotland are going to win. <laughs> win against Ireland. We're playing. They're playing us, aren't they? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. What? Yeah, 150 what? year of the Calcutta Cup. We're not going to lose it to lose it to Scotland. In uh, pajamas. <sighs> they haven't won. They haven't won in at Twickenham since what 87. Can't see it happening. I I, I have a feeling. This is my prediction, hear me. We've got no Mako, we've got no Sinclair, we've got no Underhill. F- Ford's not had a lot of rugby. Farrell's played no rugby since November. Atoji's not played any rugby since. Yes, they're going to be fit and they're going to be fit and fresh, but we looked a little bit tired against that France second team. I think with Finn Russell back at fly R for Scotland, the way he's playing, I think it'll be close. I think Stuart Hogg will boot it out on the floor a few times and muck up again and it'll be fine. <laughs> He'll go hero mode and it won't work. Yep. I think we'll suss them in the backs. I think up front it'll be an arm wrestle, but I think they won't be able to deal with our back line defensively. I hope so. I really hope a dog who plays as well. I want him, I want to see him play. Get him in somewhere, please. Yeah. Get him in. Because it, it's I want to watch him play. Um, probably game of the weekend though, as well as Ireland. But it's two sides that we don't really know what's gonna happen. Also, yeah. massive apology <laughs> for all those of you listeners out there. I didn't bat my main man in the Ireland squad. Completely forgot about him. John Cooney's not in the Ireland squad for that blinking lad at Munster. It's too old for it now. Bugger. Um, no, I think I don't. I don't agree that that's the game of the week. The game of the week is France Italy. <laughs> I think. No, you know that will be yeah, the most. Play this. The. Ireland Wales game will be a good system with old players playing against a bad system with not quite as old players, and Ireland will win by five points. Yeah, it's and new. hope and hopefully realise they need to move on from Johnny Sexton because he's ancient and you played the same way for the past eight years. <laughs> so do something else, please. That's all I want. <laughs> it's just such a like Stander is a fantastic player. It's just such a shame that these these it's unfair to call them project players, but the sort of same applies to James Lowe, the guys who've moved to Ireland and become very passionate Irishmen later in life. That we only get half a career out of them. Mm. It's it's quite frustrating. But, you know, on Leinster form, James Lowe was good enough three years ago to play for Ireland. Well, yeah, he was good enough to play for New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. But they just don't, don't make use of it. Well, there you go. New Zealand, wingers. Very exciting news in Roger Tuivasa Shek yeah. oh. signing on to move over from Rugby League. I cannot wait until he turns up at Bordeaux. <laughs> it will happen. Likely Lamb. Yes. <laughs> It'll replace Lamb because Lamb will go and yeah. join Pat at Bristol. 
Yeah. That yeah, is a, that will be a signing. Like, that'll be scary, wouldn't it? That is going to be that's that'll be the next signing. He's probably, I think he's only at Bull over two years. He'll be there. And but, the Morahan's contract just swap them over. Easy. God. Imagine that bat line. Poor my bet my best mate Luke Morahan doesn't even get in that team. He's gonna go to Japan. Is Morahan. It? Surely. Yeah, 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 stuff on the day, yeah absolutely. He's got so much to offer though. I'm yeah. surprised he went, no, he'll he, he end up at Irish. We'll give him £650,000 because he's Australian. That's true. You do like an Australian. We, have nine, we had nine Australians playing on the weekend. Some of them are half English as well, but yeah, that's not bad. So I can't wait for us to see who we sign next. Mm. Um, to relieve it there then. Anything else briefly to cover? To I don't think there's anything doing the rounds. Nothing, no massive transfers. No. That I could think of. I haven't watched the interview with Zach Mercer, but from all accounts, the, the one that he gave to the Bath social media guy this afternoon, but on all accounts, it's quite brave and honest about why he's leaving, why he's going to Montpellier. Um, I think... Good luck to him, and it's an yeah. in, interesting age to go across and do it. What I think is the sad thing is that he's gone and because he could have apparently played for Scotland because he grew up in Edinburgh. Um, was that he kind of he was one of those players that people are like oh cap him gets capped once never again, mm-hmm. and I think he's just kind of he's come and he's got that cap or whatever and like he's in a period when there's Simmons and there's Vinopola and there's Don Brandt and he's a different type of player and he's not going to get near that international side. So he's not going to get that extra 20 grand they get a game or whatever. Go cash in in France. Why not? And he, don't play in a terrible yeah. bath team. Yeah, exactly. But he he needs to come back when the England game plan is uh, having an eight with more like Simmons and him and someone else in the pack picks up that eight ball carrying thing that Vina Polo does. But maybe we find a massive, an enormous six somewhere. Maybe we start playing more with a Toji or a Zeke at six. And then you can have a smaller eight because basically as soon as Vina Polo leaves, because he's or leaves or gets old or too injured, he's so unique. It doesn't make sense. It's like, like we've been struggling with Tuolangi. You build a game plan around him being available when he's not there, it's a massive problem. So there'll a, a time will come and we can't build this game plan around Vunapola being this good. And that's probably the time that Mercer and Simmons start playing. Um I've just had I've just found some transfers. Um a real strange one is Logo Munapola has been linked with Grenoble in Pro D Dur. They've got plenty of money. So not- not that daft. Yeah. He's a pro. He needs a job. Fair. Um, yeah. I'm going to make one. This is kind of like, well, he's out of contract, but this is a club I'd expect him to sign for if he was to come to England. Uh, Teddy Tomat to Leicester Tigers. Quins. <laughs> Quins. Quins. He's going to Quins. Why? Why? Apparently, that, apparently, that's the rumour that he's. Ashton's replacement. Sure. Another troublemaker. <laughs> yeah. And also you can some... imagine yeah, go on. Danny Danny Kerr and Teddy Tom on, on the town in London. I just God. think it'd be such a lesser signing. Yeah, but they've they've already done that, haven't they? They can't keep just filling their squad with wingers. I know what you mean. And all, the other one in there is obviously Simon Zebo is our contract, so he'll be linked with Irish at some point because he's uh, uh, an old. Well, I say old. He's thirty. I mean, I wouldn't. I just wouldn't say no. He still could do a game. No, uh, Simon Zebo would be a great signing for anyone in the Premiership. Yeah, I, I generally, yeah, would quite yeah. like that. He's he's big enough. He's not too old. That's what I thought. He, Thank you. We, we need we need a um, we need a fullback. Well, Tom Parton's been very well there, but Tom Homer's 
was good. I think it's a good pickup from Bath, but I think he's been injured. So someone to help nurture Parton through would be useful, especially he's played at the international level. No disrespect to Tom Homer, but Simon Zebo has played. He's a British and Irish line as well. Mm. Really good player. Um, abs- absolutely no chance that Tom will come to England. No. Anyway, the um, motivation for French clubs to pay the French uh, French upbringing player is too strong compared to what an, an English club can justify paying for a French player when you could just get a New Zealander. We, name me, on that though, name me the last French player to play in England. It's Louis Pickamon. Yeah, and he Pick him up. fifteen years yeah. basically since homegrown rules started being emphasized. Because he... like, it's Pick him up against Chabal, basically. That's it. Yeah, and Serge Betson and um, it, Ibanez. The scrum half, Dum- is it Dumay or what was his name? Is Dupuy, Julian yeah. Dupuy. He was a quality player. Yeah, he, no, the, the only ones the most available for in the Northern Hemisphere for a player to play in their home country is too strong. They're probably the best at that, aren't they, actually? The French. Hmm. Got the most money to traffic them, to be fair. Yes. Um, I mean, to be fair, obviously the system was challenged in the legal system by... um, the South African fullback, whose name I've also forgotten. South African French fullback, huge guy. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Classens, no. Stelling. Spedding. Spedding. Scott Spedding. Yeah. Um, so it's, it wasn't it wasn't okay. perfect. It's quite well refined now. Um, basically, they changed it to not being because it was discri- it was genuinely discriminatory under EU. Um, EU law, they changed it to trained in France for a period of time rather than French born, um, which is probably the right thing to do. Um, but now they now they have that, and the rule is really strict. They're re- that's why they they get these Wallace and Fortuna guys who are technically French citizens, and they're like gold dust. So the Taufa Fenua both the older one and the new centre of Racing because mm. he, he's as much a French citizen as somebody born in Paris mm. so it doesn't count towards that that limit so they're they're really valuable for them but mm. it's quite a good rule on balance I think I think they all work quite well the Welsh one's a bit illogical and a bit cruel more than anything because they've got to move to these horrible clubs where they'll never win anything ever again mm. uh, but that's that. That one is a shame. But the, I think the English and the French ones and the New Zealand one are fine. I quite like the Australian one that they can keep if they get sixty caps. Maybe sixty caps is too much, but it's enough time. Maybe if you said sixty caps and or two hundred Super Rugby appearances. Or something more like 100 Super Rugby appearances. That would be quite good. Mm-hmm. There you go. Right. Well, that brings us nice to the end of um, this episode of the Rock and Ball podcast. As I say, thank you for listening. If you got this far, follow us, let people know about us. We're going to take over the world. <laughs>